Well, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I told, as, as I was getting ready to come up this morning, and we noticed that there weren't a lot of people here, I told, I told Perry, I said, this must be what Pastor Steve felt like in March, May, April, May last year when there was nobody here but me and Carrie and the kids, you know, for the most part. So um, I'm glad that you guys are here. I know we've got a lot of people who are out and sick this morning, so... Um, I don't even think we have any kids here to dismiss. I just got really loud. That is awesome. <clears throat> That's fine. Um, I know that for those of you who are watching online, I know that you were having some problems hearing a while ago. Just be patient. Carrie is upstairs working in the booth, and that is not her forte. Um, she's just been forced up there, and she's doing a great job. So um, bear with us if there's any problems. If it does, if the sound does get cutting out, for those online who are watching, um, we will make sure it's posted this afternoon so that you guys can watch, because I know we've got a lot of people home watching this morning. So last week, Pastor Steve kind of set a precedence for those of you who are here. Um, and, you know, I thought I would follow suit and have a cupcake, because <laughs> cupcakes are great, right? Cupcakes bring joy into our lives. So I'm going to stand up here, and I'm going to eat this cupcake this morning, and just make you guys suffer. Is something going wrong? Not, We've already got technical difficulties going on. We're not doing this. You don't get it. You're going to <laughs> You're gonna eat my cupcake, Barry? No, I'm going to eat my cupcake. <laughs> Go sit down. <laughs> no, down there. Nobody wants to watch you eat a cupcake. I know. I had one last night. <laughs> Thanks, DJ. You're welcome, Perry. He didn't get the one last week, so he got one this week. I know, he's, he's a mean guy. You'll have to ask him if he'll share with you. Just having a little bit of fun this morning, because it's important to have fun at church. Um, we go through enough in life as it is that we need to make sure that we're having fun when we can. Um, there is so much in the world today that is, that is sour. And actually, since I get to preach two weeks, I got another two-week series going on. Um, and we're going to call this one, When Life Gives You Lemons, What to Do When Life Goes Sour. Man, how often does that happen, right? That's, a, that's a, a really common phrase that we hear too, right? When life gives you lemons, what are you supposed to do? Make lemonade, right? Okay, but there's, there's some other things that you can do with lemons. I looked up because there's a lot of quotes that go along with that. Anytime there's a dot, 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 you get to fill in the blank, right? So I'd heard some other ones before. So, like, sometimes when life gives you lemons, you need to learn to juggle, right? You got, you got too much going on. You just kind of got to learn to th- juggle. I'm not good at juggling. I, I didn't even bring any lemons up here because if I would have tried to juggle, it would have been bad news, right? Uh, another one that I liked that I read was, when life gives you lemons, freeze them and use them to throw at your enemies using some sort of trebuchet, right? <laughs> when life gives you lemons, you never know why you're getting them, Right? It's never a good thing, though, when life gives you lemons. Because the thing about lemons is on their own, they are sour, right? Nobody is like, like we don't keep at our house. I don't know about your house. But at our house, we, we keep oranges in the fridge, right? We keep, and, and the kids will just go peel an orange and eat it. I've never seen anybody keep a lemon in the fridge just to go peel it and eat it. That, that mm, you know, it's not Okay. Meyer lemons are good, yes, but I still, I don't think I could eat one. So um, you need the sweetness. Another saying that I read is when life gives you lemons, make sure you ask life for sugar and water too. Otherwise, your final product would be some acidic lemon juice, right? You need that. You need other ingredients in your life to make those lemons into lemonade. But the thing is, life gives everybody lemons. There is... Nobody in this room, save maybe Barrett, who has not had something super sour happen in their life, right? Anybody who's lived any amount of time has had something bad happen in their life. I, you know, I've been pretty blessed. A lot of people think that whenever, whenever they think of lemons, they think of really bad, bad things happen in my life. But I've been really blessed to only lose three people who were really close to me so far. I, God has blessed me with that. I've lost three grandparents. Um, 
But the thing about all three of them is they were all very sick for a long time before they passed away. And when they passed, it wasn't that bitterness that came with death. It was that <sighs> relief because they were no longer suffering. And I knew that all three of them, that all three of them will be in heaven one day. I, I have no, like, there is no sourness to me there. And maybe that's just the way God has programmed me, but death is common. And death is, whenever you, you look at death, it's something that we see a lot, especially today. Um, but that's not the only way we suffer, right? We don't just suffer because we've lost somebody. We suffer when we lose a job. We suffer uh, maybe at a divorce, right? You're getting divorced. You, your, your family, some family's getting divorced. A close friend is getting divorced. We suffer there. Uh, it could be a number of things that we're suffering through. You know, it, it's loss and tragedy don't come in any certain form. It, it's different for everybody. What is tragic to me might not be tragic to Vic, right? And what's tragic to Harvey might not be anything to me because we're all different kinds of people. So everybody is going to experience tragedy and loss in different ways. And this morning, we're going to be talking and looking through tragedy and loss, how we should handle those things, why those things come into my life, why are these things happening. Before we get into the message, let's pray. God, I just come before you right now thanking you for the opportunity to speak your word. God, I pray that you just use this to reach into somebody's life, whether it's somebody in this room, somebody watching online right now, somebody who's going to view it later this week or in the future. God, I just pray that you use these words to speak to them. I pray these things in your name. Amen. You know, life stinks sometimes. Tragedy happens. We lose people. We lose things. It's part of life. But tragedies like losing someone, like losing a job, influence the rest of our life. It's a big thing in our lives, and it influences our faith. This morning, we're going to talk about how tr loss and tragedy influence our faith. So the first point this morning is, what do I need to do, what do I need to know about tragedy and loss? And here's the key thought through the whole sermon this morning is keep this in mind. Tragedies and loss reveal my faith. So the tragedies and the loss that I go through, the tragedies and loss that you go through, they reveal our faith in God. They reveal how strong it is. They reveal how weak it is. They strengthen it. They show us areas that we need to work on. So what do I need to know about tragedy and loss? First thing that we need to know about tragedy and loss is that tragedy and loss will happen to me and around me. We are guaranteed to see tragedy in our lives. We are guaranteed to have loss in our lives. Ever since Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, we are guaranteed to lose people. Nobody wants to talk about it. It's not something that we like to talk about, right? But there is no way, save the rapture happening, that we will not lose somebody we love. We've got this horrible virus running through, the, running through the world right now that is taking people from us, right? Some people, we don't understand why. They were perfectly healthy. Some people were not very healthy, and it took them. Tragedy in life, or er, tragedy and loss is going to happen. <clears throat> life is going to give us lemons. That is a guarantee. It stinks but I think you need to know this. You will be around tragedy and loss in your life. How many in this room, you can raise your hand if you want, have lost somebody, have experienced tragedy or loss in your life? Uh, everybody, right? You know, Carrie, when I got to preach the last series, the last time I got to preach, Steve and Karen were supposed to be on vacation, but they had experienced a tragedy and loss. And I was trying to figure out what to preach on, and Carrie said, well, you can't preach. I knew it was something that I needed to be preached on, but it wasn't the right time, right? Because we were going through a loss in our family. It's something that we will always be around. There'll always be something going on like 9-11. We just celebrated the 20th anniversary of 9-11 
last month. Man, that, that was a, that's a rough one for me. You know, maybe it's because it was the first time I ever questioned how safe I was in America, right? But that was a great tragedy in our nation. There'll always be police shootings or plane crashes or, you know, these huge monumental things in the world that are tragedies that we are, we are enveloped in because we are part of the human race. But then there's also the ones that hit close to home. You'll hear about someone who lost a close friend. You'll hear about someone who's going through a divorce. You'll, see, you'll hear about this couple that you thought was the perfect couple. Nothing going wrong in their life. You'll hear, man, how many times? I just read an article the other day about a pastor who got beat up because he was caught molesting a child. Man, like, you, those, are the, those are the tragedies that rock our world, right? And those are the ones that go on around us, but sometimes tragedy comes to us. It comes in and we experience firsthand. Life is going to give you lemons. The Bible promises us that as humans, and especially as Christians, we are going to go through tragedies. The Bible never says that once you become a Christian, your life is nothing Roses and rainbows, right? There's nowhere in the Bible that says, oh, you're, you're a Christian now. You, you believe in God. You, you have accepted Jesus into your life. Oh, it's going to be easy peasy, right? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Not happening, right? I want to look at two passages in the Bible that promise suffering and loss. But there are many more than just these two. So in John 16, I don't have them up on the screen this morning, but in John 16... Verse 33, Jesus is talking here. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will have suffering in this world. Be courageous. I have conquered the world. That is a promise. Jesus is talking to his, to his followers there. I have told you these things. He's, he's told them a bunch of things so that they will have peace because you might have suffering. Is that what the Bible says? Is that what Jesus said here? You might have suffering in this world? He says you will have suffering in this world. There are going to be times in your life where you're going to be skipping along, everything's going great and dandy, and boom, flat on your face you fall. Because we will have tragedies and we will have suffering in this world. But we have a promise as Christians. Once we are in a relationship we have a promise that he has conquered the world. We can be courageous in those times, even though they're guaranteed to come. You will suffer. There will be loss and tragedy. This is a guarantee. Man, Jesus experienced it. Right? Steve talked about it for three weeks. Jesus is probably one of Jesus' most tragic losses in his life was his good friend Lazarus. What did Jesus do when Lazarus died? When he heard Lazarus died, what did he do? He wept. That is the only time that we see that Jesus wept. I'm sure he cried more, but it was important for Luke to write it down that Jesus wept, right? When Jesus was on the cross, that's a pretty tragic thing, right? But he was thinking about us. This was a personal hurt to Jesus. In our perfect God, if our perfect God suffered, if Jesus Christ suffered, we can be assured that we are going to suffer as well. Over in Job, Job 14, we're going to look at another place. A few thousand years before Jesus, there was a man named Job, right? Job, this guy lived. Most of us in this room have probably, I would say, it's safe to say everybody in this room's heard about Job and what he went through. But for those of you who don't, he was a normal guy, right? He was a great guy. He had a farm. He had a business. He had a family with lots of kids. Pretty wealthy guy. Owned a ton of camels, owned a ton of sheep, had a big house, had a ton of kids, had a wife that loved him, and he had done nothing wrong, and he lost it all. He lost it all. He suffered it. And this is what he said in Job 14, verse 1. 
He says, anyone born of a woman is short of days and full of trouble. We're not going to be here long on this earth as a whole, right? Our life is but a vapor. But that time is going to be full of trouble. Job knew that. A man who lost everything, he said that to his friends. He'd been having his friends come and say, hey, why don't you just forsake God? Why don't you do this? And he said, I know that anyone born of a woman is short of days and full of trouble. He's saying that we're guaranteed to face tragedy and loss. It's found in Scripture, so I know that it's true, right? We know, looking at these two passages, and if we believe the Bible to be as true as it is, then we can, be, we can know that we're going to face hard times in our life. We're going to face those times. Again, look around us. Man, our world, look at our country right now, right? It's full of turmoil. We've, we're, our country is full of racism, murders, abuse, bankruptcies, corruption. All around us, these things happen. But also look around. You have friends and family that are getting divorced. You have friends who are depressed. You yourself perhaps have lost someone to cancer, to COVID, to an unexplained reason. Tragedies and loss will happen to and around you. The Bible talks a lot about tragedies and suffering. And eventually, you may think the next question. So point number two is, why does God allow tragedy to happen? Man, this question gets asked all the time. You talk to somebody who's been in war. Why does, why does that happen? I've talked to many people about God. And some, like I talked, I remember in college, I worked... Uh, at a warehouse, and I was going to Bible college. Everybody knew that. Um, I have a different approach to evangelism than most, right? And there was this other guy there who was working who was very outspoken. You need to have Jesus in your life. And, and like shoving it down people's throats, right? When you shove things down people's throats, they tend to choke, right? They, they tend to reject it a little bit. I, I'm more of a let me get to know you and see how I can introduce, introduce you to Jesus, right? Because everybody's going to need a little bit of a different, different path, right? Paul did the same thing. He used, um, at Mars Hill, he used all of the idols that were around him to, to speak to the, the people there, right? He spoke to, to different people in different ways. He would speak to the synagogue or the Jews different than he spoke to the Gentiles. And so I was talking to this one guy this one day after, after this other guy had been cramming down his throat. And he said, TJ, I was in Vietnam. I don't understand why God would let that happen. I don't understand how a God could let that happen. We all go through that. When we lose somebody or when a tragedy happens in our life, we ask why. Like I said at the beginning, tragedy and loss are different for everybody. The beginning of 2011 was a pretty rough time for me. Within a couple of weeks, I found out that my parents were getting divorced after 27 years. And a job, a, a, a youth pastor position that I was certain I was going to get, that I was excited about, that I knew was where God wanted me, fell through. I was devastated to say the least. It was a very time. Man, it was probably the hardest, darkest time of my life. My parents, that my, my whole life had been built around. I'm 27 years old. They've been married forever, right, at that point. We're getting divorced, and this job, this position that I had built up in my head was where God was calling us next, was just ripped out from underneath me. And I, I'm not going to lie. For both of those, I ask God, why? Why is this happening? Why is this happening right now? Why is this happening at all? Why did I not get this position? Why are my parents splitting up? What is going on? God, why? Maybe you've asked a question like this. Maybe you've asked God, why are you let my parents split up? God, why are my parents divorced? God, why would you take my job away? 
God, why would you let my child become addicted to drugs? God, why would you take my spouse from me? Why would you take the love of my life out of my life? If you've not asked the question of why yet, I promise you that someday you will. I don't know anybody whose faith is so strong that they will never ask God why. Job, who went through so much, asked God why. I want to give you a few reasons why God allows tragedy and trials to happen. People ask why all the time. I want to give you a few reasons. And then I will give you the main reason, which is what we'll focus on. Some of the reasons is sometimes, but not every time, as we see in the Bible, God allows people to suffer tragedies as a form of punishment. You look in the Old Testament, and you see tragedy strike people as a form of punishment right? What happened to Lot's wife as a form of punishment? She was taken, right? She turned into a pillar of salt. That was punishment, right? I'm sure Lot didn't love the fact that his wife was gone. Lot fell in love with a city that he shouldn't have been in. There's a lot of times in the Old Testament where we see that God uses tragedy and loss as a form of punishment. I have no doubt that there are times in my life where the things that are happening are a punishment from God. Because, and, and you might be saying, why would God punish me? Well, if you're a child of God, he loves you so much that he's going to punish you, right? At, you ask Addison and Barrett if, if they ever get punished, and then ask them why. Because they know that I love them. They know that Carrie and I love them, and we want what is best for them. A second reason that sometimes tragedies happen is God also allows people to go through tragedies and loss in order to strengthen them, right? You lose, you you go through a bunch of little tragedies and it builds up your your strength, right? If you guys, men or women, have ever lifted weights, do you just start with like the the heaviest weight? Like, no, you got to build up to it, right? You don't just and automatically bench press 225, like, you got to start out just benching the 45-pound bar, right? You got to work up to it. The little tragedies in our life, the things that we think are so monumental are strengthening us for something that may come later, right? The loss of, the loss of a job might be strengthening you for the loss of a loved one, Right? The fact that you became super ill at a time when you couldn't afford to may be preparing you so that you think, oh, I need to start putting away a little bit of money, right? I need to start building a safety net. Whatever it is that you're going through, God is going to use that to build you up, right? It might be strength training. Another reason is that God also allows people to suffer so that they can serve and minister to others who have suffered in the same way. Right? You might go through something right now, or in the future, or you've gone through something in the past, that you're going to come across somebody, and you will now know how to better minister to them. Right? I hope I don't have to do this for a long time, but one day somebody's parent's going to pass away and I won't be able to minister to them because I've not lost a parent, right? I can minister to anybody who's lost a grandparent because I've lost three. I can minister to kids and adults whose parents have gone through divorce, right? That was one of the greatest things that happened during that time is our pastor at the time, his mom and dad got divorced at about the same age that I was at the time. So he was able to use that tragedy to speak into my life, to say, it's not your fault. Your whole childhood wasn't a lie. Something happened recently, right? I'm 27. I've been out of the house. Carrie and I had been married for six years at that point, right? It wasn't my fault. Reasons that maybe God is allowing you to go through these tragedies and losses. But the main reason 
is so that I will turn my eyes upon him. When you are going through those tragedies and that loss in your life, God is wanting you to focus on him. That is, that is the one thing through all three of my grandparents' death. Is God, I just pray that you bring some of my cousins and face them back to you. God, I pray that my relationship is right enough with you that I can speak into my cousins' lives, right? I've got some cousins who, who've not lived a Christian life. We all grew up in Christian homes, but sometimes they walk away. And when we go through tragedies and hard times, God's wanting us to focus on him. In an event recorded in the Old Testament, people were taken into captivity by an evil nation, they were, they were taken into captivity by Babylon. When they were captured and put into slavery, this is what they proclaimed in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 40 through 41. It says, Let us exclaim and probe our ways and turn back to God. Let's lift our hearts and hands to God in heaven. They were now captured into slavery, and the, they said, Let's examine our ways and turn back to God. Let's see where we're wrong and turn back to God. They had walked away from God. The Israelites were on a, man, they had, they had one of those dysfunctional relationships, right? They would walk away, and then God would bring them back, and then they'd be walking with God, and then they'd walk away, and then he'd bring them back, right? Here, they are saying, not only do we need to turn back, but we need to lift our hearts and our hands to God. In the midst of tragedy and suffering, we need to do that. Let us lift our hands to God, right? Let us look and see how we can focus on God better through this. The next verse that I'll look at is in Job again. It's a very powerful verse. As I read this, I want you to ask yourself, is your faith strong enough to say this in the midst of a trial? In Job 13, verse 15, the first part of it, it says, even if he kills me, I will hope in him. Job said, I have gone through so much that even if God kills me, I know that it's for him. He's taken all of this tragedy, all of this heartache, and said, no matter what's going on, I'm going to trust in God. Job lost it all. Job, like I said, he lost his family. He, 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 his, his wife turned her back on God and him. He lost all of his kids. He lost most, if not all, of his livestock, most, if not all, of his servants, he lost everything. And still, in the depths of the depths, in the, in the lowest place that you would think a human could get, he said, even if God kills me, I will trust in him. Job saying that no matter what God allows him to go through, he will still trust God. When you lose at someone, when you go through that tragedy, when you, when you lose a job, will you still look to God with joy? Or will you complain and hate God? When we go through that tragic loss, it's easy to say, God, why? And then just turn our back on him and walk away, right? It's easy to say, I can't handle this right now. You were supposed to protect me, but you let this come into my life. We've already looked at why that might be, right? In times of tragedy and loss, the best thing we can do is look to God. Not look away from him, but look to him. Why is that? Two reasons why. God is always in perfect control. God's always in control of our lives. If we've given him the reins, he's not going to lead us down a wrong path, right? Right? Sometimes we try to lead ourselves down that wrong path. God's not going to let us go. He's in perfect control of the whole time. And second, God knows how to perfectly help you. God knows what you need, and he knows how to protect you. I know what my kids need, and I know how to protect them from it, right? I don't let, just, I don't let Barrett just go play out in the street and ride his bike up and down our street. It's a pretty busy street, right? People fly off of 101, and... They don't care sometimes, right? They don't look. So God is, knows how to protect us, and he wants to protect us. I want to read a quote to you guys from a pastor. It says, God responds to our why questions with a who answer. I'm going to say that again. God responds to our why question 
with a who answer. When we ask why, God answers with who. What this means is that we should be more focused on turning to God than we are wondering why God would allow tragedy to happen. Right? God is the answer to our why. God has allowed this to happen for one of those three or four reasons, right? Sometimes it's to discipline us. Sometimes it's to bring strength into our lives. And sometimes it's so that we can minister to somebody else later on the road. But ultimately, it's so that I will turn my eyes to him. In 2011, like I was saying a while ago, I had one of the worst months of my life. This church that Carrie and I had went and candidated out, we were excited about. We had flown out to Colorado. I had talked with the pastor many times. He flew us out. We were there for the three or four days. Went to a service, and things were going great. Talked with the pastor, talked with the, the committee that was the, the search committee. Things were going awesome. Things were looking so great. It was, gonna, it was what we thought was where God wanted us next, like I said. The two hour drive back to the airport, the associate pastor took us. And the whole time, talked about how, how great we were, how perfect, we were, how, how it was pretty much a done deal. And we were excited. And then on March 11th, that's a pretty significant day out here, and that's how I will never forget what happened in my own life that day. But March 11, 2011, what happened here? The tsunami, Right? The, the big, huge tsunami. And I, I was able to use that as an excuse at work as to why I was so down because I was still processing things. But my mom called me about 8.30 that morning, bawling her eyes out, telling me my dad had left. And, and it, I was devastated. I, I couldn't process it. I, I couldn't figure out what was going on. I cried. I tried to process it but still not knowing what was going on, still having this hope that something in my life was about to happen. And then a few weeks later, on a Friday night, we were sitting at some friend's house. We had a really good, oh man, a, a great close group of friends in Springfield that we, Carrie and I have been friends with since college, and we're still great friends with them today. And we were sitting at their house playing, playing games, which was a pretty much a every Friday night occurrence for us. And my phone went ba -ding -ding, whatever notification I had at the time for emails. And I picked it up and I looked at it and I read the email. And it said it was from the church. And I was like, oh, this is the email I've been waiting for. I start reading it. And, and the tears. I, I, <laughs> I just lost it. All of this tragedy had happened at the same time. They said, we're going to move in another direction. And I was broken hearted. I had just learned that my parents were no longer together. I had just learned that I probably was, this was kind of our last chance to get into ministry, get back into full-time student ministry. Carrie and I had kind of decided that it maybe, maybe it's not time if this doesn't work out. We'd, we'd gone on so many, I'd put out so many applications, and the finality of, you know what, this isn't going to happen. This isn't, where I want to be. This isn't where God wants us to be. I cry. Carrie had to drive. Carrie had to drive me home that night because I was just so distraught. She never drives. I'm. I'm always. I'm the manly man who drives everywhere, right? It, it, I just drive everywhere. But that night, I think I sat in the back seat. I might have sat in the front seat and just bawled the whole way home. I, I don't even remember what happened after. After I got in the car, I don't remember anything that happened because I was so devastated. But the next day. I woke up, and I had to tell God, not my will, but your will be done. His will, no matter what we're going through, will get us through. So how do I get through this? How do I get through tragedy and loss? After something happens, you need to know what to do, right? It's not enough to know why these things happen. It's not enough to know that they will happen. You need to know how to move forward from them. Right? Because if you don't have a plan how to move forward, you're stuck there. And the way we move forward is by remembering who God is and remembering 
who he has given you for strength. Remember who God is and remember who he has given you for strength. It's a two-part plan. In Romans 8.28, it says, We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. That's a great verse, right? And we use that. We love that verse as Christians. Because when good things happen to us, we know that it's God using it for us, right? Use this. Because all things work together. All good things work together for God, right? Is that what the, Bible, the verse says? All things, right? We tend to forget that when a negative happens. And going through that tragedy and that loss, it's hard to see why. It's hard to, it's hard to remember that, oh, even this bad thing that I'm going through right now will work for good for, for, for me because I love God. When life's going good, we love this verse. And when it's bad, we kind of been like, eh, I don't know why I'm going through this. Nothing good's going to come from this. Right? I can tell you that through the loss of my grandparents, a lot of good came. Right? A lot of people heard about the gospel who may not have heard it otherwise. I can tell you that the good that came out of my mom and dad getting divorced is that now I know how to, how to minister to those who have gone through that, either at a young age or an older age. I can tell you the good that came of not getting that position. I can't say all of the good, but we wouldn't have ended up here, right? I, I, I may have been hurt again in ministry. We had left a very toxic ministry position, and it may have been another one that we were going into, right? All things work together for good, the good and the bad that we go through. The second thing is we need to remember who God has given us for strength, right? God has given us him for strength, right? We're supposed to lean on him. But sometimes you need somebody to give you a hug, right? Can God give you a hug? Like he can't just reach down. I mean, yes, you can feel his presence in your life and you can feel that, that from knowing God is there with you. But there is nothing better than getting a hug from somebody whenever you're hurting, right? There is nothing better that when I've had a long day at work or I remember that night I was sitting on the, I, I left the house and went and sat on the back porch and Carrie came out and put her arms around me and that's all I needed, right? You know, you need that physical touch. You need somebody, somebody here on earth to be in your life and God has given us those people 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. He comforts us, he comforts us in our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who, have, who are in any kind of affliction through the comfort we ourselves receive from God. God comforts us so that we can comfort others. We learn how to deal with our tragedy so that we can comfort others in theirs. Right? We are not supposed to isolate ourselves, right? Man, <laughs> this last year, all of 2020, when everybody was all isolated and nobody could be around anybody, people's demeanors changed, right? We put up this, this six-foot barrier all the way around us and said, that's close enough. And what happens whenever you don't allow people into your lives? You become hard you become cold, and you become inconsolable. God has put people in our lives so that whenever we are going through things, they can be there to comfort us. We have parents that we can talk to. Some of us have parents that we can talk to, right? We have parents that we can talk to. We have friends that we can talk to about things. Uh, we have church leaders, deacons, pastor that we can talk to about things. We have our spouses that we can talk to about things. We need others. You need others in your life. Don't be too prideful to admit that you need comfort and help from others. I can't do things on my own. I know that there are certain things, if I'm going to go through them, I'm going to have to have Carrie by my side. I'm going to have to have a good friend by my side, right? 
I don't like to think about some of the things I'm going to go through one day and who will or won't be by my side because I know that when I go through those things, God will put the perfect person to be in my life at that time. In closing this morning, I want you to ask yourself this question. Will tragedies reveal that I have a strong or a weak faith in God? Because remember, it all comes back. It all comes back to that main point of our tragedies that we go through reveal our faith in God. The tragedy you're going through right now, do you have a strong or a weak faith in God through those? Are you cracking under the pressure or are you depending on God? You don't have to have everything in your life figured out. You don't have to know what things are. You don't have to be strong all the time. But you have a God who knows everything. If you're a Christian, if you're here this morning and God is in your life, if you are a child of his, then you've got that comfort in him. You can trust him that he knows what's going on. You can trust that God wants to be in your life and wants to protect you and wants to guide you through those tragedies that you're going to go through. When the world around us falls, God will be there to hold us up. Trust in him. Let's pray. God, we come before you this morning thanking you for the promise that even though you have promised us we are going to go through hard times, that you will be there for us. Thank you for allowing us to, to be able to use the things that have come in our life to minister to other people, to reach out and comfort other people. God, I thank you for the times in my life when you showed up in the, tar in the tragedies and in the times where, where I couldn't carry through, but you were there to comfort me. God, I thank you for the people that you've brought into my life over the years that, that have just been able to carry me through those times. I pray, God, that that you help us all in this room, listening online, to, to carry through in these tragedies, Lord, to, to focus on you. And when we see others going through tragedies, to find ways to comfort them the way you've comforted us. God, I pray these things in your name. Amen. Thank you guys for, for listening this morning. Next week, we're going to be continuing in this series that gives you lemons. Um, don't, you won't want to miss it. So uh, as, as we uh, get ready to close, I'm going to have the ushers come forward. Perry's going to come forward and give a couple of announcements and, and dismiss us in prayer. And thank you guys for coming this morning. Thank you for being here. Um, I know numbers are down, but we've got a lot of people who are traveling, a lot of people who are sick. So make sure that you're praying for those that, that aren't here this morning because there was a reason they weren't.